Over the past 30 years, the landscape of world's copper consumption changed significantly. In this video, I'm going to visualize such changes and fundamental demographic and economic drivers. First, I use this graph to show economic development and copper consumption. Each bubble is a country. The size of bubbles is population, and the color is a continent. The x-axis is GDP per capita, and y-axis is copper consumption per capita. At the starting year of 1980, there is a clear correlation between copper per capita and GDP per capita. At the lower left corner, these are Asia countries like China, India, Indonesia, and Thailand, with low copper consumption and underdeveloped economies. At the upper right corner, these are developed countries like European countries, the U.S. and Japan, with much higher copper used per capita. Now the world started to change. China and India started to move right. Malaysia went up as the country's emerging semiconductor industry increased the demand for copper. South Korea and Taiwan were moving to the top of the graph as they became the leading Asia and global manufacturing centers. In developed countries, they became wealthier but without using more copper. And then, at the start of the new century, China's copper consumption started to accelerate after it joined the WTO, and its export-driven industrial sector started to take off. In the meantime, air conditioner, very copper-intensive appliances, started to come into average families. And now we come to the world today. After 30 years, there is still a correlation between wealth and copper usage. You can see countries like India, Indonesia, South Africa, Brazil, Mexico, Russia, Japan, Germany were all sitting in the line. Countries with intensive manufacturing industry like China and South Korea are above the line, and U.S. and U.K. are below the line as their economies are less dependent on manufacturing. Now, a recap of Asia countries. Next, let's have a look at the impact of demographic changes on copper consumption. I changed the x-axis to the proportion of working-age population. In 1980, we can see two groups of countries. At the lower left corner, these are Asia countries like China, India, Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Malaysia. They had young population and used less copper per capita. And on the upper right corner, these are European countries, the U.S. and Japan, with more people at work and consume more copper. And now, here we go. You see, in 1980s, in China, after the one-child policy was introduced, the proportion of working-age population started to rise as young people came into workforce and less people was born. Compared to China, India was moving at a more steady pace. Look at these developed countries. They moved a little in both directions as the copper consumption stopped to grow after the demographic dividend ended. And now let's look at this blue bubble, which is Japan. It started to move backwards due to its aging population, and then we see a corresponding decline of its copper consumption. And since the start of the new century, China's copper consumption started to accelerate. It was a young country with low population dependency ratio. So families enjoyed rapid growth of discretionary spending, and they used it to raise living standards by buying more houses and using more electricity, which boosted copper consumption. And in the end, we've come to a new world today, where there are no two distinct groups of countries anymore. Now, a comparison between China and Japan. 